is Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Moore, presented by Marriott Vacation Club Rentals and brought to you by VolleyballMag.com. Welcome back to part two with Madison McKibben. And again, if you missed our video streaming of it, you can find it on the McKibben Volleyball Facebook page if you just want to watch us hang around and and act like idiots and drink some wine and talk some volleyball. You can watch us on their Facebook page. And if you want to just listen to us in the car or whatever, we got you here on Sandcast. Uh, a quick announcement before we get to part two. So we did a Madison McKibben signed mini ball giveaway. A lot of alliteration there. And the winner is Mick Kelly. Uh, Madison commented on the video that you won. And he asked that you direct message him for the address and to figure out the, you know, how to deliver it and all that jazz. So uh, a a shout out to both of our sponsors. Uh, Wilson is a sponsor of the Sandcast and of the McKibben Brothers. So we appreciate Wilson for supporting our podcast. We appreciate Marriott Vacation Club Rentals and Rocks Volleyball as well. And we appreciate Madison for coming on. So without further ado, here is part two. Do you think it had a... uh how different is it playing like with, with Riley? He's your brother. You talk about like it's easy to listen to a guy like Ty. Yeah. Riley, you have a completely different relationship with that goes, it's way more important to keep a good relationship with your brother than it is with a partner. Yeah. How does that kind of Well, I think work? I think we would both agree that we have a hard time listening to each other um, because just because you're brothers, if you hear one word of critique, you go straight back to the last thing he messed up on and you're thinking like, yeah. Dude, don't talk to me when you're not doing this. <laughs> right. It's just like you revert to it. And I think I'm like, oh, that's so bad. Like I would never treat anyone else like that. And so it's it's this battle of trying to take um, suggestions and criticisms constructively. And I know it sounds like a very basic thing, but it's it's hard when you're yeah. working with, with your brother. And yeah. one of the things that, that's helped us, I think, a lot is we've been really trying to outline, you know, let's work on three things. Uh, we came up with a video with Gina, and Gina talked about the three things that she wants to work on in practice. So we've tried to implement that. And the one thing, how that has helped us is we have a plan of, okay, this is what we're working on. So if we mess up on something else, I'm not going to get mad at you. You're not going to get mad at me because we're just working on these three things, right? And then enforcing at the end of practice one thing that went well, one thing we're going to work on. So the, the idea of it is, is to cut down on the frustration and and uh, whatever you want to call it between you and your partner, have a plan, have an outline. So then you can call someone out for something if you really want to. Like, hey, you didn't do number one on our list. Or Riley, you suck at number two. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's definitely an extra, uh, an added challenge when it's your brother, for sure. Yeah. But I can relate to like when you're going to play with Ty, who had already won a tournament, yeah. has played on the tour for a long time. I got to come out fresh and play with Hayden. So there was nothing in the back of my mind that was going to question what he's saying. Yeah. So it allowed me to just be like, just be free, be open, and just do you. Because you know that Hayden's doing what he's doing perfectly. Yeah. And even if it wasn't perfect, I wasn't about to question it, at least in our first yeah. two years together. And then I started to question it the last few years, and I think it gave me an autoimmune disease. <laughs> but I, 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 <laughs> I, think, I think when out. it does come to partnerships, I think you almost have to trust one person's vision at first. Maybe, maybe I'm off. Oh, totally. But you, but you have to just, okay, I'm just going to go with everything you say and let's try it out. Because if you keep bickering and yeah. going back and forth, it's like, I think nothing gets done. And I will yeah. say, who is my first partner in Beach Volleyball Madison? Riley McKibben. Riley McKibben, his brother. So I played with Riley a lot. Riley and was better than try really? growing up. Riley kind of kind of taught me the game i mean we started playing together he saw i mean these are like he saw a future yeah <laughs> second are, best player these are tournaments where you can, <laughs> in the world you can win like a like a 20 dollar costco card but they have to give it to your mom oh so yeah. you don't lose your ncaa eligibility right something like that high stakes but yeah me and riley started playing together and he was kind of like he's kind of he's a intellectual guy he's a thinker yeah and i'm if you know me i'm pretty much the opposite so us playing together, he was like telling me like the secrets of beach volleyball that he had learned. Mm-hmm. He was like, they, him and Spencer uh, McLaughlin went up to Cali in high school once and, and was like living with Stein Metzger for a few days yeah. or something, like asking him questions and all that. So he brought that back. Anyway, I played with Riley and I was for sure learning a lot from him. Mm-hmm. We kind of learned to love the game together. But I think I see that same thing in your guys' relationship that he's a little more of the intellectual guy and you, as you proved with Ty are mm-hmm. more of the 
me, I guess, like yeah. intellectual, I mean, instinctual, don't think, trust our preparation, mm-hmm. and in some ways just be the beast. Yeah. Like a lot of people give me credit, some matches where it's like, wow, try, you went off. I was like, I literally just listened to every single word that Hayden said. I knew exactly what he wanted me to do, and I executed, mm-hmm. and it made me look really good. But me listening to John and being open to that, to being the, the second tier guy, I guess, made me look like I was the star. And, and him willing, being willing to make, let me look like the star for us to win was like the perfect combo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I see that with you guys. Too. I, I agree. I think, I think one of the, the battles that we have is how can we, how can we find each other's strengths and just mesh well? Just kind of what you said. And it's an ongoing situation. I think it's an Riley, challenge though, being a brother. Yeah, no, it is. But the, and a good one. the more we find that, hey, you're better at this than I am, then the world is just a happier place. We don't fight. <laughs> well, that's going to happen either way. And it's entertaining for all of us. So thank you. <laughs> and then in San Francisco, you get your first win, mm-hmm. which congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Did you expect to win an AVP tournament this year? No. Like, what was, did you have like a, <laughs> did you have like a, about a timeline <laughs> of goals? And where would, have, would winning an AVP have fallen on that? Um, I, you know, I, I wish I did have a, a further timeline of goals. Um, I know I have some goals for, for this year, but, um, I, I you know, I, I don't know where that would have fallen. Um, with that tournament, you know, that with a few of the other tournaments, a lot of the best teams w- were not there, but when people look back 10 years from now, they will not remember that Nick and Phil weren't there. They'll just remember that me and Ty won it. So it's looking true. back, I won, but you know, we, we didn't have a lot of the best teams there. So it was kind of the, it was the perfect storm. And so, there still was Billy and Stafford. Yeah, no, Billy and Stafford were there. Who had won in, in an almost fully loaded field two weeks before in Seattle. Yeah, and, and they were playing well. Uh, and Ricardo. And the Ricardo, most decorated blocker of all time. I know. And Reed. Um, we, you know, I mean, we had to play Chase and, and Avery in the, in the quarters. And then Zahn and Ratledge in the semis. Uh, a team I had never really wanted to go up against. Um, and then, yeah, Slick and Billy in the finals. Um, I mean, I have to say Slick, I know, wasn't 100%. Uh, he, he strained his ab, I believe, in the semis, even though he was still able to pull off that miraculous comeback in the semis down. I thought 14-11. You told me 14-8. 14-8 or 9. And thanks to the new AVP rules, I don't know what, what it's called, but you have to win a real point. Free at serve. The end, free serve, right. They were able to come back. And so that, that finals was... I mean, I, I can't take anything away from myself. I, I stayed in the moment, and I, I played well. I played probably the best height that I've ever played, which surprised me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Slick wasn't 100%. I mean, Billy was incredibly gnarly. And, I mean, you got to look at Ty Loomis' performance. He was siding out at huge numbers every single time. Not, not like that's not like him, but we, we, played, we played well. Yeah. Yeah. You guys played awesome ball. And what I was wondering immediately after that tournament – if I'm Riley, I'm probably like, shoot, my partner is gone. Did you, was it at all like a consideration when you won that tournament? Did you have to, was there any rethinking that maybe I might have to stick it out with Ty instead of going back to Riley when he gets healthy? You know, from, from day one, um, uh, just coming back to that story, Riley is the reason why I'm playing beach volleyball. And I didn't go back to him because of that reason. But, you know, when I first started playing with Reed, I told Reed, well, when Riley comes back, I'm going to play with him. Same thing I told to Ty. And after when San Francisco tried, I mean, Ty tried, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Ty tried, you know, he, he wanted to keep going. And I, I completely understand. But for me, I've always been an incredibly loyal person, incredibly loyal person to my brother. And, you know, we play the, the game of beach volleyball, which I, I love to do. But, you know, we both know that financially it, it's hard to sustain. Right. And playing with my brother, I, I love to, to play with my brother. It's, w- when we win, it's that much better. When we lose, it, it, it really sucks. But in order to make our, this lifestyle sustainable, like we have to create content. We have to, to develop a brand with, within this sport. And I'm not saying that I'm only playing with him because of our brand. Right. But honestly, like to, when you win with someone who's, who's had your back for that long, or, you know, who has encouraged you to pursue so many different things, like that in itself is like, you know what, I know I had success with this one person, but I'd, I'd much rather win with you. 
And so my, my goal is I want to win with Riley, right? And so I, I get to do that. We get to keep making content and be these idiotic bearded brothers on the AVP. And, and to me, that's where I, I want to be, be in life. That's, and I'm completely happy with that. Yeah, and that, I love it too. I respect it. It's great. It. Yeah. And so now here are you guys are, are making content. You're doing everything that, that you're mentioning there. And, and with Beach Volleyball, one of the ways to be, well, financially risky and sustainable is to play international. Now, you won an AVP, so you proved you can play with the best in the U.S. Has there ever been any thought for you and Riley to go international? I know that you're playing in the Norseka qualifier on Wednesday, yeah. which no one ever finds out about Norsekas. You can no, check their schedule don't. 100 times a day. You yeah, won't, and if you you go won't to, find out until two, <laughs> two days before. I just found out the day before the <laughs> registration closes. If you go to down to the beach during one of these Norseka qualifiers, you can see pretty much an AVP going on yeah, so, at so, the beach, but they don't promote it. I know. Well, so, so we're going to do the USAV's job right now. We're playing in the qualifier, the south side of the Manhattan Beach, on Wednesday the 14th. Which is the day that this comes out. <laughs> but if you're watching on yeah. Facebook, um, and it's going to be 8 a.m., 10 o'clock, well, maybe, maybe you won't see it. But um, you said uh, like it was an option to go play international. Right, right. You said it? like, well, you guys want to go play. Hey, I'd love to go play internationally, right. but the competition right now is it's incredibly competitive. And so in order to play uh, internationally, we, we've talked about this, but for the listeners out there, you need to play in this um, uh, Norseka playoff, right? And it's a single elimination tournament, 12 teams. Usually the, the teams that are playing in the FIVB aren't in this playoff it's single elimination the top two teams go to the norseka the norseka Nors- is yeah. the qualifying tour or sorry the continental tour so north america central america caribbean if you get points on this tour those points t- count towards your fivb points europe has their own tour africa has a tour i believe I asia, asia has a too. tour um, so that's how you get on the world tour. And then Travis, by the way, what do you do with those international points? Then from there, what do you have to go and do on the FIVB? So the international points, you start with the one stars. So there's a new star system on the FIVB. So you start with the one stars where even if you win, you're likely to lose a fairly large sum of money. Depending on where it is, how far you have to travel <laughs> yeah. to get there. So say if you go to Australia, like a few of our American teams did and you win, you're still going to lose money because that's how low the payout is. So basically what you're doing is you're investing in yourself to get points. Those points will then get you into the two stars, which if you do well enough and lose enough money and you have enough sustain yourself, you go to the threes and then the fours and the fives. And even the four stars, like I talked to Theo, which you can find that on our Sandcast from last Monday or two Mondays ago. And he said that even the four stars aren't really worth going to financially. So then you have the last one, which is the majors, which are the five stars. There are only four per year, and those are really the only ones that you're going to make enough money to be like, okay, I can make a living with this game. So that is Pretty your much. FIVB I mean, ladder. If you're if you're finishing top ten at a four star, you're you're making a decent chunk of change that's making it worth your time to go. Granted, almost all the teams are going to these four stars, so you're playing the hardest tournament in the world for only making a decent chunk of change for getting top 10. If you get top 10 in the world at a, at a fully loaded world tour event, I feel like you should come out pretty damn happy with your payout. Yeah. And right. Two, in, a, in a normal sport. And two, so a lot of the times what your points will do, they're not getting you into the main draws. They're only getting you into the qualifiers or sometimes into the country quota. So you'll have times where you can get into a country quota for a four star which a few of our teams did which is played in say the hague and you if you lose in the country quota not only you don't get any prize money obviously you don't even get a single point well you don't get money out of the qualifier either right so you have to get your hotel paid for that's that's the one thing me and me and john started when i first went on the world tour me and hayden were in the qualifiers and like madison said earlier that's the most nerve-wracking thing you can play in for sure but we'd win the qualifiers and we'd just be celebrating like, yeah, free hotel room. Like, <laughs> we hope to stay here because you make your flight like you're going to do well in the tournament. So you don't have to stay there, pay for a hotel. If you're in, let's say, Switzerland or something, everything costs twice as much. So you're really celebrating like just getting a free hotel room, free food. So you're getting the buffet and everything. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, as you do well in the main draw, you're starting to make a 
So, better, so better. with all that considered, why yeah, are you yeah. playing international? So these guys are trying on making <laughs> money on the international circuit. <laughs> right. My question was, why aren't I playing? And my case in point. <laughs> it's hard. It's so it's hard. hard. And there's a lot of really good U.S. teams, you know, competing for it. So, I mean, yeah, I'm playing in the Norseka. I, I would love, or Norseka playoff, I'd love to do well in that. But, hey, I'm focused on the AVP. I'm focused, me and Riley, we, we say, like, today's a shoot day. We're going to shoot everything and anything all day, every day. Right? So that's what we're doing. We're focused on the AVP, and we're making content for our MCK Volleyball YouTube channel. For the fans. For the people. We speak for the people. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pause there for a quick commercial break from our wonderful sponsors. You're listening to Sandcast, Beach Volleyball with Tri Born and Travis Mawera, presented by Marriott Vacation Club Rentals and brought to you by VolleyballMag.com. VolleyballMag.com is, of course, your daily digital news source for all things volleyball, from NCAA women and men to beach volleyball on all levels to international and more. VolleyballMag.com, the only media outlet that covers our sport on all fronts every day. This podcast is also brought to you by Marriott Vacation Club Rentals, which offers the best vacation accommodations in the world's best vacation destinations. Wherever you travel to Florida, if you wanted to go visit the FIVB Major, to Hawaii, if you want to go see my boy Tri at the Outrigger Canoe Club, to Europe, to California for any of the AVP and FIVB events out here on the best coast, choose to rest in our luxurious guest rooms, suites, or villas for your next getaway. Villas offer all of the comforts of home, including a full kitchen, living and dining area, and separate bedrooms. Stay with the Marriott name you know and trust. Book big spaces and great places today. Visit www.mvcrentals.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Rocks Volleyball. If you know the world of beach volleyball, then you definitely know Rocks Volleyball. Whether it's their Olympic athletes like Phil Dahlhauser and Nick Lucena, or from King Crab's legendary board short line, my personal favorite, by the way. Rocks Volleyball is transcending the world of beach and indoor volleyball by fusing performance, function, and fashion. With the most epic board shorts and bikinis in the game, don't miss out on their 80% off beachwear blowout going on now. And that is 80% off, which is awesome. Or you can even customize your very own pair of board shorts on their website by using the designer. Visit www.rocksvolleyball.com to start designing your board short or picking out that perfect suit. Rocks Volleyball, where performance meets fashion. And with these shoot days too, like, have you guys figured out a plan with what you want to do moving forward? Just like, say, what would fans maybe be able to expect from you guys at AVP Huntington or AVP Austin? Like, are you guys going to be shooting stuff? Or at that point, are you more concentrated just on volleyball and winning, not just like what's no, some good like, content we can So what, what we've um, run into is like, I used to think we had like a time management problem, right? Because we shoot, we edit, we, we do all our stuff. We're like, oh, I don't have enough time. We come up with videos every Wednesday. But um, what I realized, it's, it's, not a ma- it's not a management problem. It's, a, it's an integration problem, right? So how can we, you know, set up a practice and then film something right afterwards or actually film something while we're doing practice? And I think we're getting better at that. And that's what we're trying to, to move into. And we're, we're still going to continue to create, um, like, tutorials. Uh, I mean, those, a lot of people enjoy that. But we're also we're exploring other categories of content, but all related to volleyball. And I'm not going to share any of those, but they're, it's actually really fun and just kind of plays to why we like doing it because it's, it's crazy and it's fun and it's something that, you know, excites us. If we ever get to the point where we're just mundanely coming out with instructional videos, like, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> but, like, we, we're always like, yep, that's a good idea. We, we always just say, like, we always say yes to everything. Never say no. And we don't really know what we're doing, so there's no wrong answer. Like, that's most of the fun. Like, yep. me and Tri don't know a whole lot what we're doing with Sandcast. We're just like, yep, this is what we're doing today. Go <laughs> charge it. Let's you do know? it. Yeah. Like, I mean, there, there's a saying that, that I really like, and there was, a, there was this pottery teacher, right? And he split the class in half, and he had half the class. The whole objective of the class was make the best pot you could possibly make. Half the class, they would plan one pot that they're going to make. And at the end of the semester, they're going to make that exact pot because they're planning it. Then the other half of the class had to make one pot per day, right? Now, who do you think made that best pot? And this story has been told with like knives or whatever, but who do you think made the best pot? The, the person who planned that whole time to make one pot or the group that just kept making stuff winging and making it. stuff and making stuff? Yes, winging it. There's a difference <laughs> between winging it and seeing what happens, so we'll see what happens. Yep, McGruber. 
McGruber. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, uh, yeah. should we wing it on this last bottle of wine? Yeah, yeah I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, let's so, I want to get into our final segment here, which is fan questions. You had, a, you guys had a couple. Uh, we did advertise that you would be on with Riley. Riley's out. He's sick. I could probably speak on his behalf. Oh, I know him that well. <laughs> I mean, half the time we say the same thing. So while we get the fan questions ready, we're going to just pause for, we'll have a Riley episode. for just a, a quick bottle of wine here. Now, this is also a sponsor, right? Yeah. So I think I said earlier, Rebel Coast Wine, you know, I've always been a fan of them. I actually met the, the founder at Shellbacks one night, and I recognize them. I just love what they do with their wine company. They're just, they're kind of like, 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 the, like the people's wine company. You should check them out. They're just a fun group of people that, you know, travel around in two yellow VW buses. The guy has a big mustache, so obviously I was attracted to this bottle. <laughs> obviously I was attracted to him. <laughs> no, to this bottle. So, no, it, it's been fun to work with them. Um, and, and I think uh, along the lines of making content, it, it allows us to create. Um, <laughs> it allows us. <laughs> a little spill there, sorry. It allows us to have more. Uh, more latitude on how we could potentially make content with sponsors. And that's what I like because we both studied business, me and Riley. And so you know, in content, it's like, hey, how can we, um, you know, uh, creatively make content for brands? And, oh. We got a little wine <laughs> spill. I was trying to let you guys hear the. So it's, it's been a fun experience to, to work with a company like this, especially a wine company because I like wine. Yeah, and now we're we're all sponsored also by Wilson. <clears throat> so we're gonna have a Madison oh, yeah. McKibben signed mini Wilson volleyball. And yeah. so to to win that, do you want me to say it, Madison McKibben? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you can be the spokesman. Cole, are we on this camera or that camera? All right, and just for the so those who are listening to the audio version of this, you can find the live podcast back on the McKibben Facebook. Yeah, which is where we will be able to win. This volleyball. This volleyball. And this isn't going to be an every time thing. This is our first test, our, our trial of this. So I hope you guys enjoy it. But so to win this volleyball, if you're on Facebook right now or if you're listening to this podcast, all you have to do is go to MCK Volleyball, find this live stream, which will be hosted on MCK Volleyball. And all we want you to do is, is comment tagging two friends. All right. So, and if you have anything to say on recommendations, if you like this, if you didn't, if you want to see more of it. What the three of us are trying to do, and Riley included, is, I mean, I know this is used more often than not, is, is grow the sport, right? But we want to hear your feedback, and we want you guys to share this with people who might be interested in, in, might be interested in it. So to get this signed volleyball, I'll have Riley sign it as well. Tag two friends in the comment section, and if you feel like it, leave us a comment of what you thought about it. And then we will we'll pick our winner. I guess, Madison, you and Riley... You sure. Can, you can pick the winners. I'll pick the winner. All right. So the McKibbins will pick the winners. Yeah, I like and we that. will get this Madison McKibben signed volleyball Thank to you. you as soon as we can. Wilson also gave us, I was looking on the site and they have this custom Hawaii Wilson volleyball. So we're also going to have this. This will be down the road. And we'll let you guys know. Follow all the social media and you'll know how to get it. But we're going to have all the Hawaiians sign it. Yep. And, uh, and all the Hawaiians will include five players so me uh madison and riley mckibben taylor crab trevor crab the five current players from hawaii the Solid. baby court boys yep something like that is that a weird name no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> i like it but we're all gonna sign it and uh, we'll do a giveaway later on on a later date <laughs> later on, on just tune in date. maybe when we get taylor on it's a cliffhanger we'll, uh, we'll yeah we'll, that one we got to get all the hawaiians through the podcast first and then and then we'll do the giveaway for the ball. All right. Cheers. Sounds good. And now we are uh, we're moving on to some fan questions. Ooh. So this is this is always Were fun. So mean? we haven't we haven't been able to do these for a while because me and Tri have been in different states. We've been just all over the map. So glad we're back in our born on the beach studios here in Redondo. Uh, this is from Entire Bach. So we kind of mentioned this earlier, but not this kind of specific question. So he says, are the 8 to 12 seeds that much better than the qualifying teams? Would you like to see more 24 or 32 team draws or that water down the quote unquote pro status of the tournament? Ooh, okay. It's a good question. Kind of two questions. Um, I'm going to address how Sorry. it was, how much better is the 8 to 12? 8 to 12 top. than the qualifiers because the, in, the, in the standard 16 team draw, 
you get 12 automatic yeah. teams and then it goes into a qualifier, which this year it went as big as 106 teams. Yeah. Okay. So my, the idea that hits me first is something that I've thought about. I haven't thought it out completely, but I'm going to share it with you. I thought it was always such a bummer to come out of the qualifier and you're like, God, I made it. And then you have to play Nick or Phil or Casey and Jake, <laughs> not sure, or whoever it was. You're like, all right, sick, sweet. <laughs> And so I, I don't know how the structure would go, but it would be nice. And now that I'm, I think, on the lower side of the main draw, maybe I don't agree with this now. But it would be kind of cool if the top four teams in, out of the qualifier played the, the bottom four teams in a first round. I don't know how that would work out because it doesn't... There would have it, to be a buy. It, yeah, there would have to be a buy. In a, a 24 team draw, that's not exactly how it comes well, out, but 20, it's closer. It's uh, I'm talking like 16, right? Right. So in the standard 16. Yeah, team I, I'm just talking about okay. the 16. Okay. I, I, I had like I said, I haven't really thoroughly thought out this idea on logistics. <laughs> Conover, you can help me with this. But it, it would be cool because, because I think what's so hard and what took us so long to make it in the main draw is is the relegation between the the bottom of the main draw and the top of the qualifier. It's hard. It's really hard. The, the relegation system doesn't work because. As a qualifying team, you're playing one of the top four seeds. You're gonna you're gonna lose, right? But if you play one of the bottom four seeds in the qualifier, like I think the relegation and the, the best teams will remain in the main draw. Like I said, logistically, I don't know. Now to the twenty four seeds, I don't know, dude. Do you like I haven't thought that far. Do you like <laughs> bigger draws? Like say in like I, Chicago. Is that a is that a better because you see in a sixteen team tournament you generally see the same teams playing the same teams over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. But then the twenty four and the thirty twos mix it up a fair amount and you get different matchups and different games and I don't know. I like it as a as a fan of it because I'm seeing different matches. Interesting. Do you think that would help uh like help the popularity of other players or would it dilute it more in the sport? So I think that it would kind of have, it's sort of a double-sided sword there because I think the top players would hate it because the the prize money gets watered down. I yeah. think that the mid tiers to the bottoms would love it. Speaking as one from who's sort yeah, of qualified no, I, level. And I, I, get that. I always appreciate the 2014 draws because you don't get Cayman Ricardo yeah. sitting in a 2014 draw. No, I, I feel you. But my, my question to you is from a marketing standpoint of, you know, people not knowing all the players in the AVP, does adding more teams to the main draw help kind of like the quote unquote brands of these players or. So I think, know? so if you're the AVP and with a 2014 draw, or say like Manhattan, you can still market it as, hey, Phil Dahlhauser is going to be here. You don't necessarily need to worry about marketing the guys coming out of the qualifiers. No, no I, and I'm not talking about marketing them. I'm talking about like fan just, awareness of okay. all these new players when they don't even know some of the top players. I, I don't know. It's a good point. I'm, I'm not sure. M- maybe it would be better. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have the I'm answers. Not, I'm not That's speaking sure. against yeah. a larger draw. Yeah. I'm just being the devil's advocate of speaking up. You know, would it help? Would it not? Right. I don't know. Whatever the answer is, I think all the players would be happy with whatever makes the tour more successful. Yeah. Therefore, make speaking of, us of make a better living. The, the success of the tour, I, I have to say this. I went to an, an AVP first event um, in Arizona two weeks ago. We, we put on a clinic, me and Riley. And I just needed a shout out to uh, Marty and Tony G who have been putting on these junior clinics or junior tournaments out all across the, uh, all across the U.S. Because I'm not saying this is standard for everything, but I feel like youth tournaments are kind of, it, it's, it's an opportunity for people to easily make money and not put on the best event that they can. I'm not saying that everyone does that, but the event that they put on was so well put on from the awards to the setup, I mean, you had the AVP banners, you had AVP nets, you had official referees. Like, I remember refereeing my games in Hermosa Beach growing up, and you had the one kid who grew up playing volleyball with his dad since he was nine years old, calling everyone sets. And I was like, you know what? I don't need you. I don't need you right <laughs> now. But I, I just want to say, like, just kind of growing the sport, they're, they're actually doing a phenomenal job. And try if you ever have, ever have the opportunity to work with uh, AVP first, it's actually a great thing. So I know yeah. you put on your, your nonprofit clinics and stuff like that back in Hawaii. So I just, I had to speak out. I mean, For say sure. something about that. I thought it was amazing uh, watching Hermosa last year and seeing actually two kids that 
we grew up that grew up like oh, cheering right. for us at Outrigger. The Hainers. The little Hainer kids. Yeah. They were on center they got put on center court to win their whatever it was championship. They were the A V P champions of I don't know how old they are, 15, 14 years old or something. But Dude, they got how, to play on stadium court, and I was actually calling the match. <laughs> I was broadcasting their match. Like, it's two what? brothers, too. Two like, brothers from Hawaii they, growing that's up. Awesome. Yeah. They're going to be better than we are. I mean, Speak for at, yourself. At 15, years, <laughs> at 15 years old, though, I was like starstruck playing in the Daddy Hain four-man. Yeah. And that was like getting worked, which the Daddy Hain four-man's a... <laughs> uh, Kind of a legendary four-man tournament that it's we play. It's pretty gnarly. If you can imagine me, Taylor, Riley, try when he's healthy, guys playing a four-man tournament at Outrigger, it's, it's pretty it high heated, level. yeah. Yeah. And um, do, do but some of the old school guys play too? Like do Wong and Stein, do they come out there for this? When those? we were younger, they did, which yeah. was really cool for us. Like I got yeah. to play in, I, think, I want to say it was the Daddy. Um, yeah, I got to play in the Daddy with? and met, I met, um, no, you know what? It was a KOB and I met, Kevin Wong in the finals. So it's oh, me really? in high school. I think I remember that. Against Kevin Wong, who's already a pro. I remember and we were all that. like, whoa, it's Kevin Wong. So that was a cool experience. And I actually held my own. I almost beat him. So for me to like come out to the yeah, to the real tour sick. after yeah. that being like, well, I held my own against Kevin Wong. Like, I bet I can do it out here in yeah. Cali. That actually like had I feel you. That helped me a ton coming out here. It, it does feel nice. I got to I think the first time I won the daddy. Uh, Mike Lambert was on my team, but like you, you have his name on like the, the plaque, but Lambert was our B. Like he didn't hit, but having his name on it has like a, a tint yeah. to my win. Yeah. I was open. <laughs> I hit every ball. It says Mike Lambert on it. Yeah, People look like, oh, because Lambo was uh, on yeah, the Lambo team. Was Lambo was a open. legit B. He split time with someone else because he was hanging with his family. Eating but I was a like, lot of pasta. I was like, dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> That anyway, was like that's honestly. You, you can imagine what it's like to play out there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get down to Hawaii at some point. I'm gonna have to make that happen. I know, I know you guys well enough at this point that I just I gotta go. And it's beautiful, obviously. Yeah, oh, dude, we're on, we're on it. We're gonna do when I'm back playing. We're gonna do. I'm been try, I've been saying this for a few years, but we're gonna do off season training, legit off season training program where we're. I've talked to multiple international teams. Now that I'm saying it live, let's, I have to do it. Let's film it. But like I've taught, I was out in Florida last week and talking to multiple international teams that are like, just let us know. Like we'd love to come out. We'll go out to Wayno's Court on the North Shore, which is like probably the nicest beach volleyball court on earth. Are you gonna invite him or no? Travis, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so he'll be on the pool deck. He'll be on the pool deck. Writing. Yay. There's a South pool Paul's. deck looking over the court, which is, and just beyond that is a horse pasture. And if you walk out of the house and down the street, you go to one of the nice, nicest, most pristine white sand beaches ever in Mokalia. So uh, just picture that, you guys. We're going to do that. And then we'll have the McKibben Bros film it. Yeah, we'll do the sandcast from there. Sandcast and it. And maybe we could do it from a Marriott Vacation Club rental. Exactly. Club. That's <laughs> where we'll <laughs> stay. I'll say the Marriott. It's all Hawaii. coming together. Done. Heck yeah. We're going to pause there for a quick commercial break from our wonderful sponsors. You're listening to Sandcast, Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Mawerta, presented by Marriott Vacation Club Rentals and brought to you by VolleyballMag.com. VolleyballMag.com is, of course, your daily digital news source for all things volleyball, from NCAA women and men to beach volleyball on all levels to international and more. VolleyballMag.com, the only media outlet that covers our sport on all fronts every day. This podcast is also brought to you by Marriott Vacation Club Rentals, which offers the best vacation accommodations in the world's best vacation destinations. Wherever you travel to Florida, if you wanted to go visit the FIVB Major, to Hawaii, if you want to go see my boy Tri at the Outrigger Canoe Club, to Europe, to California for any of the AVP and FIVB events out here on the best coast, choose to rest in our luxurious guest rooms, suites, or villas for your next getaway. Villas offer all of the comforts of home, including a full kitchen, living and dining area, and separate bedrooms. Stay with the Marriott name you know and trust. Book big spaces and great places today. Visit www.mvcrentals.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Rocks Volleyball. If you know the world of beach volleyball, then you definitely know Rocks Volleyball. Whether it's their Olympic athletes like Phil Dahlhauser and Nick Lucena, or from King Crab's legendary board short line, my personal favorite, by the way. Rocks Volleyball is transcending the world of beach and indoor volleyball by fusing performance, function, and fashion. With the most epic board shorts and bikinis in the game, don't miss out on their 80% off beachwear blowout going on now. And that is 80% 
80% off, which is awesome. Or you can even customize your very own pair of board shorts on their website by using the designer. Visit www.rocksvolleyball.com to start designing your board short or picking out that perfect suit. Rocks Volleyball, where performance meets fashion. All right, so we're on to our next fan question. Uh, This one's from Wolfgang. So Wolfgang, if you guys are regular listeners, loves his video games, always wants to know what video games the AVP pros are playing. So are you a gamer? If so, what video games do you play? Wait, how cool would it be if we had a video game? Well, AVP? doesn't April Ross have a video yeah, game? But no, I, I, I downloaded it. Like a legit. Oh, I like played it. It came out like, like where you can pick. Oh, Bentley's pissed. It it, it came out before pissed. before Rio. I want to say. I don't yeah, know. you're right. You're I right. downloaded. It. I was like, what no, is there's this? an AVP app uh, video game. But I'm talking oh. like where you can scroll through players and like I want to be. Oh. I want to be Madison yeah, McKibben. We're talking like the Madden. Yeah, of, the Madden of beach volleyball. One day we'll get there. Do I game? Um, what was the question? <laughs> do I play video games? Oh, yeah. I don't have a video gaming console, but uh, I, I do play a few games on my phone. I play like some uh, some Greek backgammon games called Fevga and Blakato, I think. That, that's the best. When you're overseas, they have a lot of like game. Each country yeah. has their own game that where you're like, you're not in the inner circle unless you know how to play the game. So the best way... That I learned is to download the app, learn yep. it on your phone, and then you can and then be play. in, drink, and and yeah. Most play of the guys games. I met wouldn't play me because I didn't know, so yeah. I had to do exactly I had to learn that. In, I had to learn in Turkey. Yeah, call. but if you think there's only one way to play backgammon, there's like four different games the Greeks all know how to play. So yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Sorry, Wolfgang. I know I really didn't <laughs> didn't do much there for well, you. I think so is that was the first time he asked that was with Kelly Clay. So I think it was our third guest. And Kelly, oh, she's a gamer. And Kelly's a gamer. Yeah. So then ever since then he was like, Man, they must all be gamers. So Phil Dahlhauser's a gamer. It's uh yeah. Did you guys know that? Phil's a gamer, so it's nope. it's a regular question. Uh now JB Southpaw, um Ooh. he wants to know who do you practice with? So this is kind of a, a three parter. Okay. Um is it hard to get practice times with the top four teams? Is that something that you're shooting for? Um, and have you thought about shaving to get rid of the extra wind resistance and weight? Okay, so wind resistance and weight is not a factor. Have you seen me jump? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good call. Um, in terms of playing against the top four teams, um, I don't think it's a, it's a priority. Uh, I mean, we we would love to do it. A, a lot we of those top teams. were playing against Rosie the other day. Yeah, we, we were playing against Rosie and Chase, um, and we we play against like some of the top teams. But I would say like, like the top teams, they have like their plan, they have their coach, their coach reaches out. So it's more they they have their schedule. And if you fit into it, then then great. I mean, we have practiced. I mean, pretty much everyone's practiced against everyone in the main draw. It's not like people are standoffish towards towards others. You, you'd be surprised. We all. We all kind of just intermix. I mean, th- there's times we're playing at just south of Hermosa Beach where, where me and Travis were practicing. Rosie was there. Then you had Ed Ratledge um, with his partner and then Casey Patterson and Stafford Slick. So, like, we all just kind of just rotate, I mean, and make practice plans there. Like, hey, are you free, free Friday? Yep, sure, great, good. And to yep. be honest, a lot of the times it doesn't really matter who you're playing against. You yeah. need teams to get... To, to be able to run certain drills, mm-hmm. you need multiple people. Volleyball is not the kind of sport like basketball where you can go out there and get a thousand shots up by yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. It, or you can if you have a thousand balls and you want to go shag them and walk like 50 yards for each ball. Well, it's funny. Yeah. That's what, so that's what I did when I was first learning to play, and I was terrible. So what I did was I put a trash can at a high line mm-hmm. and a trash can in the cut shot, and so I would... I would just sit, I would set it to myself and hit it. And, and then I would just go, sh- I had three balls Then I would go <laughs> shag them. And I would have, I, which I, we just I, changed. I, I, <laughs> I, I, just I know changed. your struggle. <laughs> so Travis just got five that's, fresh. That's what I used Wilsons. to do. And I was like, man, it'd be so nice to like be sitting on like a driving range and just have a bucket of balls. <laughs> here's the, fu- here's the funny story about that. That's exactly what I've been doing the last week or two since I got cleared is going out by myself and hitting, luckily Wilson hooks me up with, I have, I'm at the point in my career where I have a ton of balls, which really helps, and yeah, ball carts. I had a bunch. Um, but yeah, I've been hitting just standing high lines, cut shots, just getting that contact down. It would be nice if I was someone like in the NBA where you just snap your fingers and, and they're there shagging for you. Although, I'll give a shout out to my wife, 
who uh, came out with, <laughs> with me a few times. Gabby! And she shags for me. But, yes, I'm, you're still doing those things that you're doing in the beginning of your career, even when you've, quote unquote, made it. You know, yeah. you, you just got to do what you got to do. And it's, it's hard in volleyball when you have to <laughs> chase balls. If it's windy, the balls will literally just take off by They'll themselves. Go on their own. <laughs> They're like headed to the water and you're like sprinting. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I feel you. beach volley life. Now, we've, we've mentioned your, your Uncle Owen, and guest two wants to know if he trash talks you ever. You do have Owen. a win over Owen. Owen's got a pretty <laughs> nice um, Hawaiian pigeon dialect every once in a while. That's, that's the trash talking that I'm picturing. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say Owen trash talks at all. He's probably way more supportive than anything else. I'm sorry. What's the person's name? Uh, guest two. Guest two. I apologize that there isn't more drama there. <laughs> Try asking something about my brother. <laughs> Might be able to give you a little bit better answer. But in terms of my uncle Owen, he's a loving, supportive uncle, and I got I got nothing more for you. Who's Sorry. Ripped and on the cover of Men's Health. I know he's jacked. <laughs> and then we so we have two more uh, fan questions, and we appreciate you guys who are still sticking with us on the Facebook Live. <clears throat> yeah, this has been an extensive one. It's been fun. It's been an experiment. Um, I'm looking forward to looking at the feedback, see how it was. Yeah, who knows? Um, so this fan question is from Tams, and he wants to know what were some of your most memorable matches, um, and we'll do from AVP matches. Yeah. So no, uh, no milkshake matches at Outrigger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I talked at length about New York, right? That's been my, my most memorable match of getting out of that qualifier. Um, I guess I, I have to talk a little bit about San Francisco. I know we talked a bit about that, but, you know, Going into that match, I've never, I, I'm not like a overtly confident individual. Like I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna win this one. Right? I, I like to stay on the side of like I need to take care of my stuff and do what I need to do. But um, before, I've I've never been to a Sunday, unlike you, and I thought that I would be incredibly nervous. And for some strange reason, um, my girlfriend Chelsea, she came into the players' tent and. I, I'm not a, an arrogant or, or cocky person, but for some reason, I couldn't think, I couldn't stop thinking about what I was going to do with that bottle of champagne. <laughs> I swear to God, and, and that's, if, if anyone knows me, that, that's not kind of like my, my personality or anything, but I was like, totally. I think I was more like, it, was, it would be so much fun to do that, because I had just seen Taylor do it in New York, and it wasn't from a competitive side, it was like, God, that looks so much fun. And, and we did celebrate that Sunday night with Taylor in New York after he won, mm-hmm. which was a, a shitload of fun. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to it. But um, no, so, so San Francisco, it wasn't that I was, was confident. It was something came over me and I was just like, I, I really, really, I, I would love to do this right now. And so, it, I mean, we, we played well. Everything went to it. And like after we, uh, we won that match, I like dropped down to my knees and like, I don't know how I was going to celebrate with my partner. I didn't think that much through because I didn't think I was going to win. But <laughs> I, I dropped rolling. down and like me thinking that I, I don't want to play volleyball anymore in Greece and, you know, suffering my injuries and, you know, not performing at my highest that I at my highest potential at SC, like all that kind of hit me all at once. And I was kind of like overwhelmed by it. Um, and so that's what it was like. And to describe that feeling is... It's something I could never uh, describe to anyone else. And, like, my, my family wasn't there. My brother wasn't there for, for obvious reasons. But m- my girlfriend, Chelsea, was there. And, um, you know, to, to have, like, that, that one person there for you, it's, it was just an overall amazing experience. And luckily, my, my little brother and my dad and my brother were all at my apartment in Hermosa Beach. And me and Chelsea got on the first flight home, Southwest, changed their flight, we got Riley invited anyone and everyone who's in the volleyball community who would want to go out on a Sunday night <laughs> over to our place. So it wasn't many people. You made me change my flight, by the way. My flight was for Monday. I oh, changed yeah. it. Yeah. I flew you came. back for you. You came. And so like to, to celebrate with all those people and having your family there, like what what more could you ask for? So, you know, to answer the question, I mean, I, I thought that was just such a unique experience that not many people ever get to experience and i'm i'm happy to share it because it was so 
I, I don't know. It was so so real. I, I yeah. don't know what else to, to call in. I mean, you, you've won. You, you know what it feels like. But there was just there was so much there. And I think the stories that I've shared, like you can understand where that kind of comes from. It was cool for me even to watch from the outside. I mean, I was broadcasting it. So I was literally, I felt like I was talking to Dude, Uncle there Angus. There so many match points, too. Jameson and, and, yeah, I the felt like I was talking it, to your whole family. Like I, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the It was cool. Movie. And I went out that night and you could see, like, it was, it was, there was legit emotion, like, from your dad, Uncle, yeah. me, Uncle Angus. Like, he was, like, very, like, thankful for me even, like, yeah. calling the match and just like so grateful that you wanted and that yeah. you like had that experience even riley was yeah like, i grateful. was yeah riley was that was kind of another big part of it too because you know anyone can assume what riley probably felt at that point and it was all support from what I. he saw. actually surprised himself and he's like i thought i would be pissed off but i couldn't be more proud of you and that 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 actually means a lot um just from what we've all been through and everything so that, that, that was huge. That made uh, the experience that much, that much better. So, yeah, I guess a lot of people want to know what it was like to play, what it's like to play with Riley. And as you can tell, it's, it's, uh, it's layered. There's a lot of different layers there. But right. it's an experience that I, I will say not barely anyone gets to experience. So we're, we're going to try and win one. 2018. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Season's starting up soon. Mm-hmm. And obviously that that's the most memorable for you for emotional reasons. Um, I, I honestly think the best match to watch from that tournament is your first against Duncan oh. Budinger and Kevin McCulloch. If you will we'll link to that in the show notes, that match was epic. That was gnarly. And not saying that your final wasn't a great match, but this thing was it went it went overtime almost all three sets, I think. And then it, there was yeah. like a hundred freeze match points. I know. I, I think I think we won the first. We lost the second. But I remember being up in the second and like it was frozen and they came back. And I was like, wait, this is exhausting. I was like, let's just go to three. And then it went to three and it was frozen and they came back Which again. Which doesn't make any sense. And it was, it. Yeah, I know. It was awesome. No, I mean, Kevin McCulloch is always good. I mean, looks can be deceiving. He's a good <laughs> player. <laughs> Well, you can. He's a very good player. Honestly, look at any sport, and you can see that whenever championships are won, it's never that last game that that was the make or break. It's always something before that. Like for me, winning uh, when I won my first um, FIVB in Berlin, the final sucked. Mm-hmm. Your final was was pretty good, but my final was, was pretty, badass. Was pretty boring. But before that, we had played uh, Poland, who was one of the top teams in the world, and that was like the most one of the best matches I've ever been a part of. It's mm-hmm. on an outer court, though, and people weren't really watching. So, And I don't even think there's video of it, to be honest. Then we played Emmanuel and Pedro on stadium, but not that many people watched. And then everyone watched the final, and it just wasn't that good of a final. So it wasn't that eventful. But uh, I feel like every championship is like, like yours was won in the first round, basically, right? It was that yeah. make-or-break moment. You could have yeah. got dead last again. I know. Easily, and we wouldn't yeah. even Well, thinking. I mean, j- just going full circle, that's, they came out of the qualifier or they are in it? They were the last team in it, yeah. I think. That's what it comes, I mean, like we said before, it's extremely competitive. That's your lesson for those young kids out there. Yeah. <laughs> just turn that one match. Yeah. Just beat, just trust yourself when it's 14-11. Just, just ace her out. Go for it. Just, just <laughs> rush home, boo. I like Practice it. Practice your jump serving. <laughs> Now we have one last fan question here. This one is from Hustle Slowly. Now, Hustle Slowly has a reputation for hating on lefties. Wait, why? He's being really nice to you. Um, (laughs) Thanks, Hustle. (laughs) Now, he's being really nice to you. So he's asking, how long does it take to create the instructional videos? For one. So he he has a couple of them. We've already talked about your international aspirations and then this one is is a good closing note too who's more apt to use just for men when their beard starts going gray Ooh, good question for some reason i'm starting with the third question everyone asks <laughs> it's usually a beard question have you seen have you, have you realized that the third yeah. question is, who's gonna be the first i you know i thought riley had more gray hairs in his beard but then uh some of the kids that we coach one is like, dude, you got a bunch of gray hairs in your beard. I was like, more than Riley? He's like, yeah. It's because so, people think yours is blonde. So I don't think, I mean, I guess I might have more gray hairs, but I'm not going to dye my beard. That's a whole nother level. But ask me in a few months. Uh, 
On the first question, first question was... How long does it take to create the instructional videos? So I think one thing people don't realize is we... First off, we got to figure out what we're going to do. Then we got to figure out if we're... Um, who we're going to do it with. It's going to be ABP player. Then, you know, we need a script. We need a shot list. We need, um, we have our equipment. We have our producer who's producing this right now, uh, Colton Needler. He usually helps us out and takes care of a lot of this stuff. And then obviously we, we edit all of our cells, produce it, distribute it. So we do a lot. And we've gotten better at streamlining this process. And I think one, people, one thing people don't realize is how much work that goes into it. And so I, to be honest, I've been meaning to uh, kind of catalog it and how long it takes us per hour. But I, I'm not there yet. It's literally on my to-do list. But, uh, you know, we, if we shoot in the morning, um, then we do the audio right afterwards at our place. We can finish up the editing in the afternoon. I'd say... You know, we, we could do it in a day, possibly shorter than that. And that's what I've kind of talked about earlier. We, we're not in a time management problem. We're in a, like an integration problem. And how can we shoot more content while we practice? So it's a, it's a continually learning experience. So I'm pretty sure I didn't answer your question, but that's my answer. So the, the, the simple answer is <laughs> a, a long time for the instruction videos. Yeah. A lot more like you get, I would say for every minute of video is at least two hours of, of editing, shooting. Well, and another thing people don't realize is that this isn't based off of no prior experience either. Right. Like we've had to learn a lot. I mean, we didn't know, we didn't know anything when we first started. So it's not only how much time it takes in production and editing, but it's like, Hey, if I want to make this edit and I don't know how to do it, I got to search on YouTube, learn it, try it, screw it up, try it again. And go, okay, good. I just did it like that other YouTube video that I watch. I'm happy. So that's what people don't get is it's not just that. It's, it's all the things that we've learned as well that takes up a lot of time. And so where can everyone find you guys, the McKibben Brothers on social media? All right. So in, we got a lot of handles here. Instagram, <laughs> I'm M. McKibbe. Um, Riley is Riley Mac 4 Don't ask me why. Uh, then we got MCK Volleyball. Those are all on Instagram. Facebook, we got MCK Volleyball, which this live stream is going on right now. Uh, if you forgot, please make sure to, uh, you know, tag two friends. Me and Riley are going to sign this ball. We'll have whoever else sign it if you want, just to make it more enticing. But tag <laughs> two friends. Tell us what you liked about it on the Facebook live feed. And then finally, we have our YouTube channel with all our tutorials and everything else. That's same thing, MCK Volleyball. I'm sorry for the long-winded plugs and answers but uh yeah no we've been we've been working on a final question i think we'll start that now so we want to ask every guest kind of moving forward we mentioned the avp first which is a great thing that the avp is doing so what advice would you give to someone who is either a just getting into beach volleyball or just working their way up through volleyball in general so what is the (laughs) advice from the mckibbins watch our videos i love it simple I mean, I, 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 could give you, pros. I could give you a long form answer and you'd have to watch this video for longer, listen to the podcast, or you could just watch a video on our YouTube channel. Check them out. We cover a lot of different stuff. And uh, if we don't, just shoot us a direct message and we'll get back to you and we'll make whatever video you want. Feedback, people. Deliver it. Yeah. Let us know, let us know what you think. Cheers, Please. boys. Cheers, boys. Cheers. This is a fun Sandcast. It was great. We will catch you guys next week on Sandcast. Oh. <laughs>